Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints, my name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Hammer and Bolter Episode 2, Bound for Greatness. My earlier breakdowns had some technical and lore issues, and while we're waiting for new Warhammer TV episodes, I figured we would go back and just show you how far we've come. Today's sponsor is one of the best products and best discounts I've had on this channel. 20% off just for using code COUNTERPOINTS. It's something so important to my own health and well-being that I put off investing in forever, but I'm telling you, you just need to pull the trigger. I got the Ewan Racing Fascia Massage Gun, and holy fazoli did this thing change the game. I have a whole bunch of musculoskeletal issues from my service in the military and law enforcement, and over the years, the only thing that's worked for me to ease my pain was talented physical and massage therapists. But those guys can be expensive, and the cheaper you go, the more likely you are to hurt yourself. For the price of one high quality massage, Ewan Racing Fashion Massage Gun can put the power of a talented physical or massage therapist in your hands. There's a variety of power settings and knobs, and they work deep into the tissue to break up the knots and strains that have been holding you back. After just one session hitting my hips and legs, I release knots that have been bugging me for years. Time might heal all wounds, but the Ewan Racing Fascia Gun will break up the knots and strain muscles left over. I'm serious. Go to the link below, use code COUNTERPOINTS for 20% off, and invest in your own health by taking care of those aches and pains you've been ignoring. Do it today. Blessed are the words of the Emperor, for it is he who lights our way in his beneficence. He has bestowed upon us his great librarium so that lowly servants such as I might share his word. Know then that in the time before, when the stars were but young, and the galaxy steeped in darkness, it was the Emperor who first brought light. Knowledge corrupts. It is a dangerous thing. Do you understand this, Adept Neath? I do, Prefect. We are witness to the Ecclesiarchy and the Adeptus Administratum in their harshest lights. The Ecclesiarchy employs many priests whose mission is to minister to the masses, promoting and enforcing the cult of the God Emperor of Mankind. It was not always like this, but desperate times call for desperate measures. During the Great Crusade, the Emperor was not a god, and in fact claimed the opposite. The Emperor was a powerful psychic being who wished to manifest his vision of a united, secular, enlightened humanity. Any great forces in the universe weren't gods, but instead were aliens manifested in the war, playing on the superstitions of men. Every Everyone in the Space Marines' legions accepted this as truth, except for one Primarch and one Legion, Lorgar Aurelian and his word bearers. Lorgar was raised on the planet Colchis, where the most powerful men in society were priests. Entranced by visions of a man in golden armor arriving to save the galaxy, Lorgar conquered his home planet and started a religion worshipping the God Emperor of Mankind. When the Emperor arrived, he was repulsed and bemused by his son and the fervent population. 
Lorgar insisted on continuing to worship the Emperor even after being scolded by his father. Lorgar wrote the Lectitio Divinitatis, a holy scripture about the Emperor and the future for mankind. When news reached the Emperor of his son's continued religious intrigues, he raised the crown jewel city of Monarchia and forced Lorgar and the word bears to kneel in the ashes. Lorgar went into the warp looking for new gods to worship and was one of the first traitors to turn on the Emperor, launching the Horus Heresy. While the Emperor's divinity was denied constantly during the Horus Heresy, events transpired during it that can only be described as miracles. Mortals were chosen to lead loyalists in times of crisis, champions of the Imperium confronted demons, and prayers and relics warded off great darkness. During this time, even the strongest adherents to the secular Imperial truth turned to the Emperor for guidance, inspiration, and even worship. When the Emperor was mortally wounded and interred on the Golden Throne, the Lectitio Divinitatis went from a heretical scripture by a wayward son to the foundation of the Church of the God Emperor of Mankind. Separate but parallel to these developments was the Adeptus Administratum, created to help administer the Imperium of a Million Worlds. The Administratum is responsible for the logistics of the Imperial Guard, Navy, exacting taxes, keeping records, authorizing colonization, gathering intelligence, training assassins, managing food, medical administration, ab human affairs, studying infectious disease, and mapping the stars. In this case, we are introduced to a lowly adept and his prefect, responsible for the maintenance of a library on the world of Antioth. A dreary job is made intentionally worse with the adept's routine being sleeping on a metal bed frame, eating corpse starch, and counting books before repeating the process forever. Speaking is forbidden, reading books is forbidden, and questioning the way of things is forbidden, almost as if this environment is designed purposefully to inflame a person's desire for change. Adept Bull whispers to Adept Neath secretly about how sometimes the book count is off. This is the cause of fear and excitement for Neath as he finds an extra book and feels a powerful urge to pull it from the shelves, as if there were monsters just beyond the plane of existence, whispering at him to take the book and run his eyes across the pages. Adept Neath resists the palpable temptation and returns to his duties, shaken by the experience. To reason is to consider lies. The importance of these books cannot be understated. Why are we kept waiting? They should be here! This is testing my patience. I can't preach without the books. These books had better be worth it. Welcome, welcome. Once again, we are most honored to receive such auspicious guests. Quite so, Prefect. You are blessed indeed to serve the Emperor through our patronage. That I am. Are the new volumes ready? They are. Good. All is as it should be. Through us, the Emperor's grace will inspire thousands. Have the next batch ready early. Of course. Blessing of the Emperor upon you. Our fate is in his hands. Where I count. 
Who are you? My name is Bowl. Seems I must remind you of the rules, Adept Neath. I'm sorry, Prefect. It's just... the extra book. Extra books? Have you failed in your counting duties? I was trying to find Adept Bowl. He knows all about it. There is no Adept Bowl. But... Prefect, I spoke with him... You are mistaken. There has never been an adept here with that name. Uh, then perhaps I misheard his name. He had a marking, a scar on the side of his neck. To question is to undermine authority. There shall be no more talking. Yes, Prefect. Now go, and do not allow your thoughts to betray you. To say there is some heresy afoot is a massive understatement. Moving through it chronologically, the ecclesiarchal priests meet with the prefect to change out holy scriptures routinely. This is because while there are core tenets to the imperial cult, it is also a religion that is adapted to the many planets it serves. With such an extensive library on Antioch, it is extremely likely the priests are excited by the variations in scripture they can use to minister to the masses. Alarmed by the extra book with curiosity and fear tugging at Adept Neath, he chooses to confide its existence to Adept Bull, who is excited by the prospect. Adept Neath feels guilty and restless in the confession, checking the inventory in the middle of the night, finding both the book and Adep Bull missing. Scared and alarmed, he later barges into the mess hall, yelling Bull's name. This draws unwanted attention from his peer adepts, and I think I can speculate why. There are many terrible ways to live and die in the 40th millennium. Laborers and servitors toil in the fields of agri worlds. They lose limbs and lungs to the mines and manufactories of forge worlds. Millions of men are shipped off world every year to serve in the Imperial Guard, meeting grisly fates across the galaxy. While it might be dull to count books and eat the same gray slop every day, that is likely a vacation and an esteemed place of refuge for young men hoping to escape the horrors of the world. As such, Adept Neath is immediately seized by his peers and taken to the Prefect for discipline. Adept Neath confesses to the presence of extra and missing books and breaking the rules by trying to talk to Adept Bull. The Prefect admonishes him, blaming him for the miscount and saying that Adept Bull simply does not exist. While agreeing to behave himself, Adept Neath is driven crazier as the mundane nature of his life is confronted with massive contradictions, creating intrigue and curiosity that cannot be denied. The Prefect is revealed to have bird-like arms, a horrible mutation that would be punished by the Imperium immediately with death. He scratches his chin mischievously as the clicking and growls of of otherworldly monsters rumble in the background. I desperately want to break this down why that is, but I'll let you see the climax before explaining it.
Greetings, most auspicious... Yes, yes. Are they ready? Of course. Just as you required. Good. Oh. <sighs> Come along, hurry. There's work to be done. We shall return tomorrow, Prefect. Be ready. Of course. Gather round! Lend me your ears and listen well, for I bear words of loving enlightenment and of the brilliance that shines upon the darkest corners of our galaxy. And in its magnificence brings forth the gift of change! It is the dangerous thing. For those of you unfamiliar with the numbers and forms of gods and demons, nine is the sacred number of Zinch, and the demons shown here are pink and blue horrors along with what appears to be the serpentine and bird-like features of greater demons of Zinch. Zinch is the god of forbidden knowledge, ambition, and most of all, change. The book that keeps disappearing and reappearing is numbered 9999, and the bird-like arms of the prefect are a gift from his patron god. The prefect is the instrument of Zinch on this world, likely long corrupted and long plotting to subvert the dogma of Antioch and usher in a chaos incursion. The Precept has done this by baiting his adepts with an insanely punishing regimen. The mundane routine, the inability to reason, speak, or read, while potentially supported in scripture, have been taken to their extremes, making corruption and desire for change inevitable. Adept Bull's sneering curiosity found him sacrificed first, with Neath following quickly in his footsteps. He could not help his insatiable curiosity and temptation, and was guided to his fall by the Prefect. This book is the prime edicts from the Lictitio Divinitatis and reads, From the high rock, from this peak, let the light of worship shine, so that the Emperor himself might see it from his golden throne. When the people forget their duty, they are no longer human and become something less than beasts. They have no place in the bosom of humanity, nor in the heart of the Emperor. Let them die and be forgotten. Love the Emperor, for he is the salvation of mankind. Obey his words, for he will lead you in the light of the future. Heed his wisdom for he will protect you from evil. Whisper his prayers with devotion, for they will save your soul. Honor his servants, for they speak with his voice. Tremble before his majesty, for we all walk in his immortal shadow. Know then 
that in the time before, when the stars were but young and the galaxy steeped in darkness, it was the Emperor who first brought light. The Emperor of mankind is the light and the way, and all his actions are for the benefit of mankind, which is his people. The Emperor is God, and God is the Emperor, so it is taught, and above all things the Emperor will protect. A heretic may see the truth and seek redemption. He may be forgiven his past and will be absolved in death. A traitor can never be forgiven. A traitor will never find peace in this world or the next. There's nothing as wretched or as hated in all the world as a traitor. Some place their trust in warships and some in weapons of destruction, but we remember the divine emperor. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and virtuous. There is only the emperor and he is our shield and protector. Now, there's several fascinating things about this entry. Firstly, it calls humanity to serve the emperor of mankind and makes that a divine responsibility. The primates tie the emperor to history as a creator god, responsible for bringing light and order into the early universe. Those failing to serve the emperor are not flawed humans, but are less than human, worse than animals. It calls the faithful to follow the words of the emperor's servants, but nestled in that is a contradiction. If his servants have been corrupted, will they not lead you into damnation? For that potentiality, it makes a distinction in judgment between the traitor and the heretic. A heretic is someone who forwards a false belief thinking they are doing the right thing, whereas a traitor is someone who knowingly betrays the emperor and imperium. A heretic can be forgiven in death, but a traitor carries his shame forever. In this moral judgment, Adept Neath, if his soul could be recovered, could be forgiven by the Imperial Cult because he fell into a demonic trap laid for those unprepared for the dark forces of chaos. The Prefect, however, is unforgivable, as he knowingly led this planet into damnation. The sacrificial traps laid for the Adept seems to subtly change the Holy Text, replacing the Emperor of Mankind with the Changer of Ways. Not only that, but a priest booms about the gifts of the Emperor, the gifts of change, to a roaring audience as the shadow of a greater demon of Zinch, a Lord of Change, creeps across the surface of the planet. As the god of change, Zinch was wildly powerful in the early universe. It is said in legend that his greatness was so dominant that a combined force of the other chaos gods was summoned to destroy him, shattering him to shards across the galaxy. It is from the scattering of his power that magic and sorcery was embedded into the world. Now reconstituted, he plays the great game with relish, savoring the ambitious thirst for knowledge of his followers. He rewards them with great gifts, but always exacting a cost. A devotee of Zinch is as likely to unlock world-changing mysteries as they are to be transformed into into a gibbering, glint-toothed monster. But that is the risk you take when gambling with the god of ambition and mischief. Zinch can see the past and the present in perfect clarity, watching the strands of fate play out moment to moment, and has even empowered one of his greater demons, Kairos, to see into the future. It is partially the mischief of Zinch that keeps the great game going, because if any one faction ever truly won, the god of change would lose that which gives him power and entertainment. It is therefore in his best interest to twist the strands of fate to keep as many players on the board as possible. Before we wrap up, it needs to be remarked that the planet of Antioth is mentioned by Inquisitor Kiyomoro in the episode Death's Hand as a great battlefield on which the Imperium lost because the great enemy quote-unquote, knew their every move. It is also a place that one of the sisters from the episode A Question of Faith wishes to visit to see the Great Librarium. It is only with multiple viewings that I caught this connection, which brings us to the end for now. If you made it this far, like the video so you can show the algorithm gods you enjoy my work. Subscribe so you get more fantastic content, ring the bell so you see when it comes out, and comment down below praising your favorite Warhammer god. Support our sponsors by using the links in the description and use my code so they know that I sent you. Become a YouTube member or patron on patreon.com slash Counterpoints. Check out the politics channel in the description below if you're into that kind of thing and join the discord to hang out with fellow Warhammer and politics nerds. I appreciate you. Catch you in the next one. Until the end.